All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the three mix. I'm confident and extremely positive in myself that this video is going to go well because my attitude controls the outcome of this video. And my attitude is sponsored by the deli. Hungry? Stop by the deli and get yourself a baked potato bar with real bacon bits, fresh sour cream, sharp cheddar cheese, and some fresh cilantro. Okay, so this is the third chance for me to get this video right. 11-2. We're talking about actual calculus now. Welcome back. Okay? The goal of this video is to look at what the derivative of a vector valued function looks like, to look at how we may prove some of these properties that we're going to list out, and to look at what integration looks like. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay? Think about r of t equals 4 cosine t comma 4 sine of t. I hope you recognize this as a circle, okay? specifically a circle with radius Four. If we made a T chart, okay, let's just do that. Zero pi over two pi and two pi. So uh, four times the cosine of zero is four, because cosine of zero is one. Four times the sine of zero is zero. So that's what vector you're going to get. And then you would get 0, 4. And then you would get negative 4, 0. And we'd be back to where we started here. Keep in mind that these are not equally spaced, OK? So what that just shows you is hopefully what you already knew to be true, and that the graph of this vector valued function is a circle. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that looks more like an ellipse. Well, that's because I'm doing this on a widescreen, so bear with me. Okay, now, but more importantly, let's look at r prime of t. Okay? r prime of t is going to be equal to, let me give myself a little room. Okay, so the derivative of cosine is minus sine. So this will be negative 4 sine of t. Okay, The derivative of sine is cosine. So 4 cosine of t. Okay, So let's put in our same values. I'll do this here in red. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine is 1. Okay? Sine of pi over 2 is 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Uh, at pi, sine of pi is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1 times 4 would be negative 4. And this gets us back to where we started. Let's actually graph those. So at 0, at t equals 0, the derivative is a vector that looks like that. At um, t equals pi over 2, the derivative, oh my gosh, <laughs> the derivative is that. Now, why did I just make that error the wrong way? Because what I realized that I failed to do when I graphed my vector valued function was I failed to put its orientation on here. And that's important. We learned so much more about our curve. Okay, At pi, you get a negative 4, 0. And then we're back to where we started here. So you can see that these tangent 
vectors accurately represent the tangent lines to the curve at the point. Okay, but they do more than that, and we're going to find out what they do as we go, but I just wanted to take some practice. Okay, so now let's look at some properties of the derivatives. Okay, you can read these in your book. I just want you to understand that anywhere there is a bold letter, these are all vector valued functions. Okay, I'm not going to underline all of them. And so, like, uh, if you don't see it bolded, such as that, that's just a, a uh, typical function or a scalar valued function. So, we are going to prove one of these because one thing that you're going to be asked to do in this class is prove some of these properties. Okay? So, in order to do this, it, it takes a lot of laborious work, but it's not that mentally taxing. So, let's call R of T. Um, and here's what I'm going to do. Here's where I think I failed earlier. And I'm so lucky that I failed because now I learn from that. And I'm just fortunate to be positive in, in learning from these failures here with you guys. I'm not going to call it f1 and f2 because that kind of effed me up. So I'm going to call u of t. How about, let's call it h of t. Yeah. And I don't like vowels, so instead of i, we're going to call it J of T. Now, I'm probably breaking some unwritten professor rules right now, but luckily, I'm not a professor. I'm just a petty, poor, little high school math teacher. And no one's even watching these videos. So I'm going to do what I want, and that's what I want to do, because it's going to help me feel more confident about this problem and this proof. And then I'm going to end my week with more positivity, which is clearly always important. OK. so. R prime of t is f prime of t, comma, g prime of t. And u prime of t equals h prime of t, comma, j prime of t. Okay, so far so good. Now, we are trying to prove that the derivative of the dot product of two vector valued functions is equal to the first function dotted with the derivative of the second one plus the second function dotted with, sorry, the derivative of the second one dotted with the first one. You might recognize this as your product rule, okay? But first, we need to define what R of t dot u of t equals. Well, we can do that. It's going to be a scalar, so I don't need that. That would be wrong, because remember, the result of a dot product is just a scalar. It's just a number. So this will be f of t times h of t plus g of t times j of t. Okay, you remember that. That's how you do a dot product. So we have that down now. And now what we're going to do is expand this. We are going to expand that, because what we haven't done yet is take the derivative of this with respect to t. So the derivative with respect to t of that, OK, so th what we have here are typical scalar functions. So now we know that it's going to be f of t times the derivative of h of t, h prime of t, plus the derivative of h of t, 
excuse me, the derivative of f of t times h of t. So that is the derivative of this part. Now we need to add to that the derivative of this part. Okay? And the derivative of that part will be first g of t times the derivative of the second j prime of t. I've totally given up on changing colors because I've just decided it's not necessary. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Plus derivative of the first times the second. Okay? So what you have in black is the derivative of the second part. And this entire thing is the derivative of the dot product. So now what we need to do is show, okay, that this, what we have in black, is equivalent to that, okay? So, Let's write out um, let's write out this part right here. So R of T dot U prime of T equals okay, I got R of T here, I got U prime of T here. So it's F of T times H prime of T plus G of T times j prime of t. Okay? Now, let's write out this in blue. So, r prime of t dot u of t equals f prime of t times h of t. plus g prime of t times j of t. So now what we have to do is show that what we have in our black brackets here is equivalent to the sum of these two things. Well, if we just write them in the right order, I think our proof is done. So, it's equal to f of t, h prime of t, okay, that one, a. Now, what we want here is f prime of t, h of t. Where is that? Well, because we are allowed to add things in whatever order we want, now we're going to call this thing our second term. So, plus f prime of t times h of t. Okay, there's b. What comes next? Okay, now we want f, uh, now we want g of t plus, or g of t times j prime of t. Okay, we'll call this c. It's our third term. So plus g of t j prime of t, and then our fourth term in the sequence, or the, the sum, is this. And I think we have sufficiently demonstrated that this, the derivative of the dot product, the derivative of the dot product is equal to r of t dot u prime of t plus r prime of t dot u of t because this says the exact same thing and that's how you do those proofs, okay? It's not easy. I wouldn't insinuate that it is. It just takes a lot of work and a lot of uh, organization, which is clearly why I struggled with it. Okay, so finally an integration example. 
we are given our prime of t. Think about that like the velocity function. We want to know our position function and we're given an initial condition so we can find uh, the definite integral of this. Okay, So we know that our, let's not write in green anymore, we know that our prime of t is equal to cosine 2t negative 2 sine of t and 1 over 1 plus t squared. Okay, now what we need to do to find r of t is integrate cosine of 2t dt negative 2 sine of t oops, dt which just means with, we're integrating this with respect to t, the, the variable t, and 1 over 1 plus t squared. Okay, so let's just do a little sidebar. Remember, the integral of the cosine of 2t dt. Let u equal 2t du um, equals 2 dt. So dt equals 1 half du. That's how I remember being taught how to do that. So we're going to change this to the integral of the cosine of u du. And we're going to bring out our half integral of cosine is sine, right? The integral of cosine is positive sine. So this equals 1 half sine of 2t, OK? 1 half sine of u, and then you plug back in 2t for u. So our r of t will equal 1 half sine of 2t. Now remember, there could have been a constant here. Okay? The integral of negative 2 sine is positive 2 cosine of t. There also could have been a constant there. So now we've got to keep our constants straight. So we're going to call that second constant c2 and the first constant c1. And the integral of 1 over 1 plus t squared, you might have to go to the green sheet on that one. That is the arctan of t plus, and we could have had some other constant there. Now, if we were not given the initial conditions, we would be done. But we know some really valuable information about r of t. And that is when t equals 0, we are at the position 3, negative 2, 1. So now we've got three equations that we can set up at t equals 0 to solve for our c's. So let's solve the first one. Um, 1 half sine of 2 times 0 is 0, because we're putting in 0 for t, plus c1 is equal to 3. Okay? So in our initial position function, when we put in 0, we got 3, which must mean that 1 half c sine of 2t plus c1 equals 3. Well, sine of 0 is 0, so you get c1 equals 3. Let's set up another equation. 2. I'll change colors just so you can keep track of what's what. 2 times the cosine of 0 plus c2 must equal, what must it equal? Negative 2. There it is. Well, cosine of 0 is 1, and 2 times 1 is 2. So 2 plus c2 equals negative 2. So c2 equals negative 4. And finally, arctan of 0 plus c3 
must equal 1. Well, arctangent of 0, tangent is sine over cosine. What value is tangent 0 for? Well, it's when sine is 0, so it's 0. So this is 0 plus C3 equals 1. So now we know C3 equals 1. And now we can take this and write our final answer as R of t equals 1 half sine. I, I leave it in terms of t. I don't pop the 0 back in. The 0 was just useful information to solve for our c's. So plus 3, comma 2, cosine of t, excuse me, minus 4, okay, comma, arctan of t plus 1. And now if you could only see the smile on my face, all I got to do here is I just don't really like, I don't feel like I'm giving my best effort on these bracket signs, so I'm going to do better. And positive Thursday is over. Beat the Cardinals. Keep smiling. Boom!